All right, today on Real Talk with Zeb, today we have Miss Lone Wolf. How are you today? I'm doing wonderful. How are you? I'm doing good. We're just going to take it back a little bit. Okay. What was the inspiration as far as you getting involved with activism? Would you consider that something that you learned from your mother growing up? Yeah, um, I was born into revolution. My late mother, Juanetta Lone Wolf, who was Ogallala Lakota, and, and, and my father is black from Brooklyn. Um, I was the only girl born during the longest walk. She was a part of the American Indian Movement. She was a phenomenal organizer. Um, she was the first Native American woman to work for NBC. And um, she also was the public relations director for Muhammad Ali. So that was her introduction into Islam, as well as she just had it, it's in our blood, in our Lakota blood, um, for, to be a warrior, to be descendants of Crazy Horse and Red Cloud and even Sitting Bull, you know, it's in our, it's in our, in our lineage, you know. So, um, so that's, I would say that it was, I was born into the revolution. And the longest walk was a protest from Alcatraz to Washington, D.C. Uh, to fight against a lot of the injustice that was happening amongst indigenous people in 1978. And since then, I was just, I've just been around um, Stokely Carmichael and Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and Warrior Woman and Chief Ernie Long Walker and a, just a lot of phenomenal activists and freedom fighters. And so it was in me since I was a little girl. So when I see an injustice or even in school growing up, when I would see someone getting bullied, um, I always fought on their behalf. And even at times when I got bullied, I always stood up for who I am and where I come from. Uh, speaking of, of two revolutionaries and activists, uh, first I'll start with Russell Means. Yes. What is the importance to him as far as you and the Lakota people and the people of Pine Ridge going back to 1989 when he, when he uh, sat before Congress and gave that, that really famous speech yeah. talking about the oppression and what they had to go through over the years and uh, breaking of the treaties and, and they still were, over, were able to overcome and the comparison of how the Pine Ridge, the people of Pine Ridge, and which was the poorest compared to the Navajo, which was the richest, were basically the same in community. Yeah. Um, well, may God be pleased with Russell Means. He was a phenomenal freedom fighter, and he, for him to be one of the, the founders of the American Indian Movement, he always knew um, our, our, you know, our struggle and our fight, and for him to be speaking in front of the United Nations and to be able to let them know the plight of indigenous people that today that we are alive, today that there is, we're not extinct. You know, um, many people when they hear about the Native American history, they don't know about today. You know, that, that our history is still being made. Uh, right now there's over 5,000 people that are in Standing Rock, North Dakota, fighting against the Dakota Access Pipeline. I just came back from there, and it was beautiful to see indigenous people from not only in North America, but also in South America, Australia, even in Asia, even in uh, South America. I mean, just um, it was just beautiful to see indigenous people come from all walks of life to let the world know that we're going to come in unity to stop this black snake that of an oil pipeline, as well as that we're still here, we're not extinct, you know? Now, speaking of, of Minister Farrakhan, mm -hmm. uh, for a lot of people don't know, don't know, you consider him to be your grandfather. Yes. Well, how special is he to you as far as mentoring and in your, in your mode of being an activist? The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is my everything. You know, without him, I don't know where I would be. Um, because when my mother went to prison, she went to prison because the government was looking for someone that had a close tie with the Nation of Islam that had a prior ju uh, a record. And because my mother did, and she was also very instrumental in indigenous conferences that was in Libya, and that she was also developing those relationships with the Nation of Islam in Libya and, and being that middle person. And so when she was on, a pr on probation, she was using money that Libya gave um, to help rebuild the Nation of Islam to pay the workers um, in Phoenix, Arizona of the redeveloping of the Phoenix um, Palace. And so when my mother went to prison, 
the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and his wife, Mother Khadija, and his daughter, Maria Muhammad, and, his, and her husband, Olive Muhammad, adopted me and my brother. And we were, we could have went to the system, but it was that family that I call my family, that even though we're not of blood, but we are of the same, I, I was raised with them. So it's beautiful that they have raised me. It's beautiful that I've learned everything from him. There's not ever a time as a person that I have ever seen him um, act other than a man of God. He's always been the pure example of what a man of God is supposed to be. Um, I mean, I, I go to him for many things. Even when I was doing music, I had him listen to my album, you know, and he gave me the approval. So let, he said, let the world hear your music. Um, everything that I do, I always go to him and seek counsel from him. Now, speaking of when you were out there at the Dakota Access, out there on the front line, mm -hmm. and during that time they were bulldozing sacred sites. Yes. How did you feel about that? Just thinking about the time when I saw a video when you went back to visit your own mother's oh, yes. uh, grave back in uh, Pine Ridge. Yes. Did that make you feel a certain type of way just to see them do that to sacred sites? Because you can, you can just imagine them doing that, something like that. It hit me because those are our ancestors. If America, if we bulldoze non-government officials, bulldoze over the Veterans Memorial in Virginia, what outrage that would be. It would be a public outcry about that. It would be a huge outcry. What right do these people have to to bulldoze over these veterans of World War One and Two and the Cold War and even Afghanistan and all of this stuff. So the fact that we that they actually bulldoze over our freedom fighters, our warriors, our soldiers is unethical, and it's also it, it's a it's an outcry. So the and so the response that you saw or the world saw on the news was the outcry but it was also a peaceful outcry it wasn't we could have came with our you know our tomahawks and you know and all of that stuff but we didn't we came with a peaceful outcry so our unity and our voice stopped those bulldozers and our unity and our voice is continuing on with this fight against this pipeline and also to preserve our ancestors those are people's family so when I went to my mother, I have a family grave in, in, um, in Kyle, South Dakota. And I want to be buried there with the rest of my family. But it goes all the way back to 1800s, my family that is there. Wow. And so I would, I would hate for them to come to my family grave and, and to, you know, take over, try to take over that land and build a pipeline with that. I have a I have a two part question. Yes, sir. It's, it's it's one of the things I ask people because sometimes you know people are going through things and they look for the inspiration of how they overcome. So this is a two part question. What's the hardest thing you had to deal with personally in your life, and how did you overcome that? That's the first part. Of, and the second part is, as far as activism, what's the hardest thing you had to do uh, deal with, and how did you overcome? The, th the most um thing, the most hardest thing I had to deal with was losing my mother. When you lose your mother, you're losing a part of you. I literally felt my mother's spirit when I got the news, released from me, when I got the news that my mother was not, you know, was, was gone. Um, she died of full-blown lung cancer. She never smoked. We was told through ceremony that it was something that she ate or drank when she was in prison. So they gave her a slow kill. And so, that was the hardest thing. But the most beautiful thing out of that was the minister saying, you have to continue. She has passed the torch to you. So even though my mother, she left us money, that money was gone within a year, but it was the things that she taught us, me and my brother, that was her legacy. I am a living example of my mother's legacy as well as my children and children's children are an example um, of that legacy. Um, and activism, 
no, I won't say anything is hard in activism because I love my people so much and I would stand and live as well as die for my people. So I don't see anything being difficult in activism. Sometimes in regards to the level of ignorance, um, but I just have to, I just ask God for patience so I could be able to turn that ignorance into knowledge. Now, uh, because I know you're, you're pressed for time, yes. so I have just a, three more questions. Okay. One is talking about this year's election yes. uh, with the presidential um, of Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. I don't want to answer that. Huh? I don't want to answer that. I don't go into political stuff. But don't? Yeah, uh-uh. No, because I, I was just going to ask is uh -huh. uh, how disappointing is that that you don't even hear about indigenous people's uh, problems from them? Oh, thank you. Okay. I thought you was going to go into, who are you going to vote no, for? No, 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 I'm no. like, I don't, <laughs> don't want to get into nah, that. No. <laughs> um, once again, in, indigenous people are not extinct. So to know that, you know, I love that Bernie Sanders went out to throughout Indian country um, to hear this plight, and he's still fighting for the, he's, he's using his voice to talk about indigenous rights. And still, even after um, he wasn't in the primaries. So with Trump and Hillary, they're gonna see our unity, especially with this Dakota Access Pipeline, and our unity is gonna force them to talk about the, the plights of indigenous people. You know, it's, it's really about us unifying on a local level and us using our unified voice. I don't believe that we need a pre presidential candidate to be our voice. I believe our voice is already loud enough. Loud enough. Now, speaking of legacy and your son, what type of world would you like to see him have in the future or, you know, for the next generation? I would love for my, my sons, both of them, um, to be in a place in the world that is free, freedom, justice, and equality. I want them to walk, you know, in the streets and to play at a playground without worrying about them getting shot and murdered. I want them to be able to love, you know, whomever they would like to love despite their racial backgrounds. Um, freedom, justice, and equality. I want them to, to see what Harriet Tubman and Marcus Garvey and Nat Turner and even Massafrad Muhammad to be able for them to be able to see the dream and the vision that they had of for us. I want them to live in that. At the end of life's journey, what would you like for your legacy to be? That I love I was a lover of our people. And then I did whatever I needed to do by any means necessary so my people could have freedom, justice, and equality and also to be very comfortable in the way that God created you. Okay, we're back with the last question. At the end of life's journey, what would you like for your legacy to be? I forgot what I said, just said. Um, but for um, one thing that my mother, my mother said that I read an article recently was the creator validates you. The creator gives you validation, is what she said. And as long as I believe that everything that I have accomplished in my life, the creator gave me validation. No matter what circles I was around and whom I was around and, and all of that, the creator gave me validation. And that I did by any means necessary to make sure that those that's in my circle and those that, you know, that I fought a good fight for freedom, justice, and equality for our people. And I would love to see the union of black, brown, red, yellow, and even poor whites to come together in righteousness. And I pray that I'm able to fulfill that in my lifespan, even if it's a city, but even greater if it was a nation of that. I really appreciate your Thank time you. today. Thank you on Real Talk with Zeb. Thank you.